Alright, so today we're playing Midrange Hunter. So let's take a look at the deck. So this is the Midrange Hunter list that I settled on. The basic concept of this deck is that you use your really strong mid-game minions from uh, starting really on turn 3 with Animal Companion and going all the way up to turn 8 now with Call of the Wild. You used to top out at Savannah High Main, but now Call of the Wild exists, so it's really brought a resurgence to the deck and gives you a lot more extra push against those strong control decks. By using these minions, you overpower your opponent in the mid-game by presenting so many threats that they just run out of ways to deal with it. And then eventually you just overpower them on the board and crush them completely. You're very, very strong against control decks because control decks don't reach their straight stride to the late game. And typically their removal is designed to deal with aggro decks, which generally have a lot of small minions, whereas you have a few larger minions, which means that their removal doesn't work nearly as well. It turns out to be a very powerful deck in that case, but it also is a weaker deck against aggro. It's not impossible to win against aggro, but it's an uphill battle as midrange, because as midrange, it's really tough to deal with all of the little minions coming down at once, and you're reliant on drawing a strong hand and just your opponent drawing a weaker hand. In that case, then you're able to overpower the aggro deck, and then you can win. But it's not really to be expected. It's not going to happen most of the time. But most of the time you'll beat control as the trade-off. And that's generally how mid-range decks have, have uh, functioned historically. I really enjoy mid-range hunter. It's something I've played for a long time. I, I find it to be a lot of fun to have to know when to act as kind of a control deck and when to act as an aggro deck. Because you walk the line of both. Because at certain points in the game, you will have to make decisions between going face or clearing the board. And honestly, it's just a lot of fun. It's, in my opinion, the best way to play Hunter. Because, unfortunately, Control Hunter just isn't quite off the ground yet. And nobody likes Face Hunter. So let's check out some games and take a look at how this deck works. Okay, I'm playing Shaman. Um, Midrange Hunter has a lot of difficulty against the aggressive decks because your early game threats can't keep up with your opponent's early game threats. And this hand won't help, although actually Freezing Trap is extremely good against Shaman since it can punish Overload. And it's so likely he'll it Overload himself early. Well, Argent Squire is better than Trog, so can't be too upset. I don't particularly want to Freezing Trap it, but the threat of falling behind is quite great in this matchup. Did you bring some fish? Rolls well. Ugh. Again, it is not impossible. It's very difficult for me to catch up. Okay. I've drawn a couple of my mid range threats, which is in a way nice, but not what I need right now. Right now, I need my deadly shots, explosive shots. Quick shots. I, I need all of them because uh, trying to keep up is so incredibly difficult. See, here is where I would, if the game started right now, I would beat him every time. But it doesn't. Um, which is the the shortcoming of mid-range hunter is that when you're in an aggressive meta, it's not nearly as good. But when you're in a control meta, it, it's an excellent deck. I wonder. Theoretically, my 3-3 three, three trades with everything on board here, because it kills the Tusker Totemic, the two one ones pop out, they kill both of those. But that's that's not the reality of the situation. He's going to hit me in the face. And it's just he has 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, uh, 14 damage on board. 
Mm. I'm gonna keep hitting the start. Okay. So we get rid of the three two. One of the three fours. We throw a freezing trap. The freezing trap isn't great, it's not getting a lot of value here, and I'm aware of this. But it's again, I have to play resources as quick as possible to try to stop my opponent. Glad that hits me in the face. Use the Elec to see if we can draw into something first before quick shot. Cannot. All right. That's well, just a bit unlucky. It's pretty impossible for me to win from here. Even if I stabilize, the shaman has enough burst in their deck. Yeah, and I don't stabilize. See, turn six is the beginning of mid of mid range. Turn four to about 8, which is uh, where your Call of the Wild comes in, is where this deck is centered. So any decks that can operate before you reach that stride will have a very strong chance of beating you. Um, it's not possible for you to win, it's just very difficult, and you are not. Rexa versus Uther. I will fight with honor. Alright, so we're playing a Paladin. Begin. Uh, could be one of the aggressive paladins, could be an Azoth paladin. Uh, Cthulhu paladin's pretty uncommon. Okay, we'll hold on to the animal companions, because we can go turn two animal companion, turn three animal companion. Um, turn one fiery bat. So that's a pretty Nothing excellent opening curve. Except this is divine shield paladin though, I'm still pretty wary. Which it is. Because Divine Shield Paladin is quite difficult to deal with. It'll depend a lot on his opening hand. For duty. <coughs> okay. Because of that, I have to make this trade. Ensure is more overall damage, and the 1 1 would have made the trade after the 4 2, which is really terrible for me. Even so, this is still pretty bad. Continue to have a very strong curve. I'm gonna play the bow in order to start clearing away some of these small threats. As mid range, it, it's not a face deck. It is a deck where you overpower your opponent by having very strong mana efficient cards. Nothing scares me, except mine. Um, so in this case, I, I need to try to control the board as much as I can, which is quite difficult, but not impossible. And I can deal a lot more damage a lot faster than my opponent. I suppose I would rather give the 1-1 one, one a Divine Shield than any other card. And it prevents an extra 2 damage. Oh, apparently that Divine Shield can fizzle by hitting something that already has one. Don't worry, loves. The cavalry's here. It's not aware. Terrible for me. Mm. All right, the taunt is pretty nice. I'll trade away the three two, and then taunt. He's 
He's already used his Divine Favor, so if I can last a bit longer and he's not lucky, he doesn't draw the second Divine Favor. Wow, I'm surprised he would run Consecrate, honestly. Um, that happens to be very good for him, but would be very bad for him most of the time. Looks like I'm going to lose this game. Uh, Divine Shield Paladin is one of the hardest decks to keep up with. Um, I have to try to get tougher for the top. Hmm. Throw out the King's Alec for extra board presence as well. Draw the Count of Kodo. That's pretty nice for next turn. Alright. I haven't given up yet. It's not impossible, because Paladin shouldn't have very much extra burst. But it's looking too good. Okay, I should have used Hunter's Mark apparently there. So, snapping the Kodo will destroy the 2 2, and then that leaves 6 damage, 9 damage. Which is lethal next turn, so I would require something extra. Uh, I can't play that onto anything. So yeah, I'm just gonna lose the game here. Sure, play the extra card, get that experience. Mind Shield Paladin is extremely strong in these sorts of situations. Thank you. He has lethal, so. Okay, so we're playing Shaman. It's potentially one of those aggressive decks. Um, Shaman's probably the one that you have the best chance against, of, uh, against though, out of Divine Shield, Zoo, and uh, the Shaman decks. We'll toss the Deadly Shot. Mostly because of the fact that you can get past Overload with Freezing Trap, and... Shaman has a lot of difficulty in the mid-game if they don't manage to maintain a strong board. The goal is going to be to try to prevent him from having a strong board. This may not prove very easy, though. Going to try to play Animal Companion next turn. That is a sigh of relief. Amisha would be preferred. Good to see you, Amisha. Thanks for coming out. And now I have a realistic chance of being able to contest my opponent's board. It's actually really debatably worth uh, deadly shotting. But I don't think I will. I think I will just get rid of the 1 3 and then throw up the freezing trap. And that's the reason I threw up the freezing trap, is even though I knew the 2-3 was a trade, the I was cavalry. thinking that he probably had some sort of buff that he would use to try to trade in. This is all working out quite well for me. We get the two one ones to just get rid of both of these, and press in a little bit more extra damage. It's getting hot in here! Sorry, that's about the dogs. <laughs> um. Okay. I can continue to keep his board clear, and that is the utmost priority. Is just to keep clearing these little threats away. It seems silly to explosive shot that, 
but it's actually the correct play because you require the board like so much. drawn any of my late game threats, and that's unfortunate. Fortunately, I can do this play now, since I drew the Fiery Bat. Get a 9-5 out, that's pretty crazy. Uh, next turn with the uh, Kill Command, I would have Lethal. Now I really would have Lethal. Well, he probably has the... Oh, okay. Core Hound sucks, because it has 5 health. Forget because I never run it. <laughs> uh, I don't have lethal anymore, but yeah, I have successfully held him off to the mid game. And what if we enter into the mid game on even footing, I win. And that's how you overpower um, aggressive decks. But the thing is, it was more on him drawing poorly than me playing well. Um, if he had have had a stronger opening, then it would have been very difficult for me to overcome that. But he didn't, and I had a strong enough opening and used my resources appropriately to handle my opponent. Rexa versus Uther. I will fight with honor. Let's the hunt. Okay, so we're playing a paladin. Uh, it might be Divine Shield Paladin. It might be. Mazoth Paladin, um, possibly Cthune, and possibly Murloc as well, but unlikely. I am hoping that it is a uh, Mazoth Paladin, because I have a very strong chance against that kind of deck, whereas against a Divine Shield Paladin, my chances are much lower. I have a one drop, and that's nice. It's always nice to have a one drop. Especially when you only have one of them in your deck. Well, I mean, one kind of card. I have two copies. Okay. I have another one drop. Do you like to play with fire? Well, that'll happen. Have a turn to draw. Okay, that is fantastic news for me. Reporting for duty. Now that I know this is a strong control deck, I can choose to just try to press damage into the face as much as possible. Because you can use Reporting Blessing of Kings now, and I could have prevented that by clearing, but that's mostly irrelevant. Now here there's the value of doing this trade to protect 3-2, which I will opt for. Or doing both trades to allow for Unleash the Hounds. I, mm. I think he would have consecrated last turn, or he wouldn't have consecrated last turn if he had it though. So it's probably better not to play into it. I'd argue this plays into it slightly, but it's the same trades you would have made. Okay. And I just continue, continue going face in this circumstance, because from here I have such a strong board. I'm not really afraid of the clears he could be running. If he were to concentrate this turn, for example, it's not strong enough. Okay. I will throw out the Alec. Shoot and 
kill command and make this trade and do a little bit more extra damage. And next turn I'm threatening lethal with Call of the Wild. Because that's uh, 13 damage. Actually no, that would be plus the 2, 15 damage that Call of the Wild would do. Even if he kills everything with some sort of, Let well if he uses Consecrate, he would need something to deal with one of the two twos. A strong enough taunt could possibly do it as well. We saw Tyrion in his deck a moment ago, so he probably doesn't have it. I wonder. Heal? Okay. So this prevents lethal from me. But it also doesn't really save him, because he's still in the same position, and it actually just got a bit worse. I opt to play the Savannah because I call the Wild Axe's burst for this deck by giving everything plus one and spawning the Huffer. So I, I can wait on playing Call of the Wild and instead play another Savannah. Uh, Savannah, mm. high main. Follow the rule. Reporting for duty. He has a way to drop his attack again, so that's fine. So this is 4, 8, 10, 12, 17 damage exactly. Against the control decks, mid-range, in that turn 4 to turn 8 range, just overpowers. Very hard for the control decks to stay in against mid-range hunter. So yeah, that's, uh, that's mid-range hunter. Um, it's, it's a pretty fun deck. Do you have any opinions on this? Not in the slightest, honestly. I've never played this game before. Um, Watching you play it was fun. I hope you got all the footage you needed. I don't know where my day went. <laughs> but, uh, thanks. You want, you want to do the outro, or do you have a question for the mid-range hunters out there? Uh, you know, there's not too much to say. Just maybe how you're liking the deck now in the new meta compared to how it was running before, back with Goblins vs. Gnomes. It's like, it's really tough now, but it's still a pretty fun deck, right? Um, I don't know. Comment below. Like, subscribe if you liked what you saw, and I'll be, next, I'll be back next week with a new deck.